Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Walla Aki Batal and Muttaqeen, Walla Udwana Illa Al Dalimin. Washad Walla Illa Illallah, Wahtahu La Sharikala, Washad Wanna Muhammad and Abdu Rasulu, Khatman and Biyahi Wa Mursalim. Allahumma Salli wa Sallam, Ala Abdika Walla Sulika Muhammad, Walla Alihi Wa Ashabi, Women Daa Bidaa Watihi Wa Stenda Bi Sunnati, Illa Yomidin, Wa Sallam Taslim and Kathira. أما بعد فأوصيكم ونفسي بالتقوى الله عز وجل والسمع والطاعة ويقول الحق سبحانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds and surely the best reward ultimately is for those who have taqwa and surely there is no animosity except for the oppressor. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners. And that Muhammad, son of Abdullah, is his servant, his last messenger. May Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, his companions, to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin by cautioning myself and you to have taqwa, al khawf wa raja, that we should fear Allah Azza wa Jal, we should hope in the mercy of Allah, and this consciousness would develop around us a type of wiqaya, a shield, to protect us spiritually not only in the masjid, not only amongst Muslims, but in the society itself. And taqwa is that consciousness, it is that understanding that there is one who is closer to us with his knowledge than our juggler vein. There is one who has power <coughs> over all things. O oh, you who believe, Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed <coughs> in the beginning of Surah al Hajj, the chapter of the pilgrimage. And this is so fitting to us now as we are coming out of the days of the Hajj, we are still in the month of the Hajj, but we are coming out of the days where the pilgrims now are returning to their countries. And this is a time for us to reflect. The people who have gone through that experience are reflecting on what happened to them. And when they return, they and their families will reflect upon what changes they have gone through in their own lives. And this is a time for the Muslim Ummah, which is one body, that it needs to reflect upon its position in the world because people all around the planet are thinking about the future. They are marching in the streets. They are occupying cities, not only in America, but occupying cities in Asia, the Middle East. The younger generation especially is coming out of itself, coming uh, out of its slumber and into the world. And this is so important because it is the younger generation who will have to live in the future. And the way the earth is now, our environment is turning against us. There are things that are happening in the environment that we have never recorded before. We have never heard of this before. I'm coming from the north in Canada and I recently went into the area of the Arctic Circle. There, alhamdulillah, there is a masjid in a town called Inuvik. But high in the north, the ice is melting. And the polar bears cannot move across the top. You can actually um, travel from one section of the North Pole to another uh, without coming south. And so with this melting of the, the, the ice caps, the water throughout the planet is starting to rise. The temperatures we know from carbon dioxide release, from pollution, temperature is rising. And so the environment that was made to uh, benefit us is now turning against us. The economy itself of our countries that we thought was so strong is now falling apart right in front of our eyes. 
and the recent movements in the streets shown that there is a major inequality amongst people. And it is this inequality between the rich and the poor that is causing human beings now to come out of their homes in a state of frustration. Recent reports have shown us that the majority of the people on earth actually live on only $2.50 per day. Half of the children on earth are in a state of malnutrition. The inequalities of the world has impacted so greatly that when the powers of the world last year came together in Copenhagen in order to make uh, a plan for the future to deal with the environmental situation, the point was brought to them that the real issue is not just your factories. The real issue is inequality between the rich and the poor. And when this was said, they lost hope. And they gave up. And so it is a stalemate. But the environment is exploding. The economy is exploding. And when the hurricane hits, when the flood hits, when the earthquake hits, it does not separate or it does not distinguish between races or religions. Everybody will be affected by what is going on. And so Muslims especially, because we are supposed to be the vanguard of humanity, Muslims are called on, especially at this time, to reflect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us in the final testament the call for reflection. And when we look at the condition of Muslims today, we should have this call. And Allah Azza wa Jal has told us in Surah Al Hasha, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, Ya ayuha ladina amana taqullaha wal tandu nafsun ma qaddama li ghad wa taqullah. Inna Allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Wala takunu ka ladina nasu Allaha fa ansahum anfusahum. Allah has revealed to us, O oh, you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah, and let every soul look to what it put forward for tomorrow and fear Allah. Surely Allah is well aware of all that you do. And be not as those who forgot Allah, and so He will make them forget themselves. Surely they are the disobedient ones. And so nisyan, ghafla, forgetting the creator of the heavens and the earth, forgetting the blessings given to us. Why were we given these blessings? This is the test that is on us. When we look at the Hajj and we look at what has happened to the people and we have been hearing reports coming back from that area, we see great advances, but we also see major question marks. In this year of 1431, over 2.5 million hujjaj came into the area of the sacred precincts. Alhamdulillah, from all colors, all nationalities, this is the largest gathering on the face of the planet Earth. And that is something that Muslims need to, to look at and, and, and thank Allah Azza wa Jal that this ummah has a gathering such as this. And there are people in the area of the Hajj who have made great advancements. Advancements have been made technologically, health-wise, water is available. Even now they are talking about uh, a type of train system, a metro system that carries uh, 3,000 passengers in one train, 72,000 per hour. And this is a great advancement. This is a use of technology in a positive way. But we also uh, are told that the Kaaba itself, when it was rebuilt, the door of the Kaaba has about 280 kilograms of gold, 616 pounds of gold. That the Kiswa itself, which is the cloth over the Kaaba, uh, contains about 330 pounds of gold and silver in the thread. 330 pounds of gold and silver. This is a test. And the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, Inna li kulli umma fitna wa fitna tu ummati al-mal. 
Every nation has a test. And the trial and test of this nation would be wealth. This is the test. Why is this wealth given to us? What does this modernization mean to us <coughs> and our faith? Especially at a time when people are marching in the streets. It is reported, and the Islamic Development Bank has reported, and Muslims need to look at uh, ourselves. We need to look at ourselves. Because many times we say, okay, the Occupy 99, 1%, whatever, that's not us. We are the Ummah. We are not involved in this. But the Islamic Development Bank has just made a report and said that five of the 56 poorest countries on earth are actually Muslim-majority countries. 528 million people in these Muslim countries earn less than $2 per day. <clears throat> Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nigeria, Egypt, major Muslim countries are now suffering. It is like the inequalities are getting worse. Instead of coming closer, it is going further apart. And so when you travel through the land and travel with the Muslims, and I had the opportunity to be with the Muslims in the worst conditions and the best conditions, we realize again what Allah Azza wa Jal was telling us in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 35, And we will test you with good and evil, and you will all return to us. The fitna of wealth, the fitna of the dunya. Is it a blessing to have the dunya? And if we do have it, how do we use it? The Prophet ﷺ did not speak from himself. And an authentic hadith reported in a tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, Badiru bil a'mal fitnan qaqita in layl al mudlim. يُسْبِحَ الرَّجِلُ الْمُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُسْبِحْ كَافِرًا يُبِيُّ أَحَدُكُمْ دِينَهُ بِعَرَضًا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, Strive with good deeds. Strive before a test, a trial comes to you like pieces of a dark night. A man will wake up in the morning as a believer, and by the afternoon, he's a disbeliever. Another one in the evening will be a believe, believer, but by the next morning, he will be a disbeliever. And you will sell your religion for a few trinkets, a few things from the dunya. For a few material things, a new cell phone, a little bit of progress. He will sell his religion. And so this is a, like a turning point for us. It's like a turning point. I listened to this international newscast, and the, 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 the newscasters were looking at Mecca. One was Muslim, one was non-Muslim. And the people were moving all around. Some were walking in the streets, some were uh, uh, you know, running between Safa and Marwa, some were drinking Zamzam, some were making Tawaf. All types of things were happening. The, the Muslim said to the non-Muslim, in 15 minutes, all of these people are going to line up in uh, even lines. and They're going to pray behind one man. The non-Muslim said, that's impossible. We know people. We have large rock concerts. We have political gatherings. How can you get human beings? Then the Adhan went off. And within 15 minutes, they lined up and they prayed behind one man, behind one person. So what lies within this ummah, within the large numbers, lies the potential for leading humanity. Our history shows us, we will see when Muslims were healthy, when we were implementing Quran and Sunnah in our lives and implementing it in society, we had societies where you have uh, economic prosperity without social disintegration. 
economic prosperity without the society falling apart socially, economically. And so you, you, you made progress in both ways. This was the balance. And that really is the test. Because our large numbers can go one way or another way. The negative way is the way the Prophet he spoke about large numbers. He even told us in the well-known hadith of Tawban an, where he told us that the nations are about to call one another and descend upon you just like those who, who are eating invite their friends to eat food. And one of the companions asked him, وَمِنْ قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ Is it because we have small numbers? And the Prophet ﷺ answered, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرًا no, you will have large numbers on that day. But you will be like the scum or the foam on the water. You see a lot of foam and sticks, but the current carries it to the left, carries it to the right. It's a large number, but it has no weight. And when, at the end of this tradition, they asked him what would be the cause of this problem, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah would put a disease in your heart. And they said, what is the cause of this disease? And he told them, hubbi dunya wa karahiyatul mawt. You will love the dunya. You love it. And you're afraid to die. You hate to die. You don't want to pass on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when this comes, this is the ultimate test for us. So there's a difference between uh, modernization, right, en enjoying the benefits of uh, technology and modernism, and reforming the religion, changing ourselves, loving the dunya. There's a difference between the two. And so to separate this, we need to start to look at our, our rituals. We need to start to look at our religion, not just for the rituals, what is behind the ritual. Why do we make salah? Why are we paying zakat? Why are we fasting? Why do we make hajj? When we look at the hajj, we see Ibrahim alayhi salam, and we see that the hajj was, began in a humble way, in a humble, simple way. When we look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, best of humanity, the hajj was done in a humble, simple way. And so what is the spirit behind it? Allah Azza wa Jal, again in Surah Al-Hajj in verse 32, Allah tells us, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Such is the state, and whoever holds in honor the rights of Allah, such honor should come from the piety of the hearts. So the essence of the Hajj, the essence of it is the taqwa. The essence of it is the struggle for Hajj Mabrur, when we would be forgiven of all of our sins. Hajj is not a physical thing. We carry out the rituals. We have to carry out the Sha'ayah. We have to know the Manasik al Hajj. But the essence of the Hajj is the Niyyah, it's the intention, it's the Taqwa. And that is what we need today. The essence of the issue, what comes out of this in the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because when we look at this, we find a very humble person. When Allah described Ibrahim alayhi salam, He tells us, "Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah, hanifan, walam yakum min al min al mushrikin, shakiran li anhum ijtabahu wa hadahu ila surat al mustaqim." Allah said, "Verily, Ibrahim was a model, a nation." unto himself, de devoutly obedient to Allah, true in his faith, and he did not join partners with Allah. He showed thankfulness for the favors that Allah gave him, who chose him, and guided him to the straight path. And so look at this example that is given to us. An ummah, a model, jami' lil khair. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a good person in all aspects of his life. So we also, our nation, will have, we will have to seek goodness in all aspects of our life. Not just when we're making salat. Not you make hajj and you come back 
and put al haji fulan fulan on your shop and you raise the price. What was the good of the hajj? You fast in Ramadan and as soon as Shawwal comes, you start lying or swearing. What was the purpose of the fast? So the essence of this, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was qanitan lillah. He was devoutly obedient to Allah. He was hanif. He was a good person on the inside. So th this is what we need. The, the, the change we need is inside of our hearts. This is what we need to, to seek. Shakiran lillah. Shukr. He was thankful to his Lord. But thankfulness is not just with the mouth. It's not just alhamdulillah. Sh real shukr is with bilqalb wal lisan wal jawarih. Is with your heart and your tongue and your limbs. How do we show it with our limbs? The wealth, the ni'mah. The ni'mah that we have, we give back to the poor. And we can only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah would inspire our ummah to see that the blessings that we have, the blessings can change the conditions of the poor all over this planet. It can change the conditions of humanity. This is why we have this wealth. It should not be concentrated in a small group of people. This is what is plaguing humanity all throughout the planet. This is what is causing people to come in the streets in frustration, lose their minds. We are balanced. Dunya, wal akhirah. We're balanced. So we have the dunya in some cases. Use it for righteousness. Lose, use the ni'mah for ta'ah. Use the blessing for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a test upon us. And we pray that Allah Azza wa Jal would bless this ummah, would unite us after this hajj, would, 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 would break down the differences between us, and would give our leaders the understanding to use their blessings and their wealth to help the poor and the needy throughout the planet. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'li muslimin min kulli dhanbin istaghfiru in the Hu Hur of Hora Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Al Wahid Al Ahad, Al Farad Al Samad, Ladi Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakulla who Kufu and Ahad. وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد يا عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم ويقول صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل أمة فتنة وفتنة أمتي الماء ويقول الحق سبحانه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وعد الله أن الخلفاء الراشدين أبو بكر عمر عثمان وعلي وأنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتري لولا أن هدانا الله ربنا لا تزيق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا فضف لنا ذنوبنا وكف عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا ما ربرا اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودم يا أعداء الدين وانس عبادك يا رب العالمين اللهم أغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يعمى بالعدل والإحسان والإتاع القربة وينهى عن الفشاء والمنكر والضغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون قمصرا